Welcome back, everybody. We have an amazing artist all the way from Brazil, but lives in Spain, Kaya Cesar. He's a ZBrush artist, does amazing tips and tricks on his social posts, which are super cool. That's how I followed him and met him. Um, he's super interesting individual as well, super fun to hang out with, super passionate, um, and loves what he does. He posts almost regularly, daily, about his work. Uh, he's gonna show us everything ZBrush today. He's gonna talk about his experience, he's gonna talk about where he comes from, what he does. You can also download the assets using the QR code here. Scan the QR code, download the assets. I'll let Kayao take over and stage is yours. Thanks a lot. Hey, people. First of all, Karen, thank you since the beginning for the support. Thank you all. And hello. <laughs> Today I will talk about ZBrush Fast Learning Method. And before, I want to ask you a question of how long did it take from your first contact with 3D until your first job? Yeah, it's heavy. <laughs> For me, it took like 10 years until I could start doing what I love. So it was very hard to find a way to work with that because today I, I have an example of my life because they are, uh, people are talking to me, uh, what do you, you use? I am, um, no, I want to use the iPad, I use the computer, but with the mouse, oh, with the mouse, okay, old times. And for me, it was a big idea because it can sound for you like a problem. Oh, you use the brush with the mouse, but it was my life during like six years, eight years, and when you start looking this way, you understand nothing can stop you when, when you want to do something. Because you think ZBrush, you think pressure, but pressure is one of the features of ZBrush. You can model without pressure, OK? So let's talk about that. But before, my name is Kai Cesar. I am Brazilian. Um, I am an Instagram content creator. I'm create the creator of ZBrush Hacks. I if you want to see, ZBrush hacks about um, me teaching one feature or more, like four ways to do something in one minute. So it's the way I found to spread it knowledge for free. Okay. So I am a 3D artist at Astelflix and ZBrush mentor focusing on 3D printing. So let's go on. This is my portfolio until now. Uh, some of my pieces that I like. Uh, this one, uh, here, uh, we have uh, almost the first time. <laughs> first time doing like some complex like this, first time doing hard surface control, first time doing this crocodile there without alpha. I was, let's, let's do some challenging, <laughs> you know, let's learn something. Uh, so, First time in doing a cosplay item, first time in doing a dragon, and first time in doing this was the second time in trying to do a likeness. So I like first time. <laughs> and then uh, it was the concept I used to sculpt this guy here. It was a mentorship by Igor Kato. I love his job. And those are some whips, unfinished until now, but there are other parts of this concept. Maybe one day it will be ready. I don't know. <laughs> so this is the one video of ZBrush hacks. It won't work here. I didn't know PDF can't run video. So if you want to check it out, Kai says the scopes, there you will see some hacks. OK? Uh, about the hacks, before going on, dive into it, I have to speak Portuguese a little bit just to thank those guys because, man, I couldn't be here if it won't be the community, you know? Because those hacks it was what bring me here. So, obrigado, galera. Valeu pelo apoio do pessoal do Brasil. E realmente, seria nada aqui, não estaria aqui sem vocês. Então, coming back to English, okay? <laughs> Uh, this is some portfolio of my students. Uh, 
I like to show it because when I perceive it that when I was teaching people um, ZBrush, just open ZBrush and try to do it, and people were stuck. And then I perceived that they need a goal because what they want to reach. So if you are trying to learn ZBrush, I will ask you why. Because people come to me and, oh, I want to learn ZBrush, but why? And they tell me, I don't know. So how can I teach you if you don't know where you, wa where you want to reach, what's your goal, what you want to achieve, you know? So I started teaching for the market of 3D printing, focusing on Patreon companies, you know? So many of those, those companies are Patreon that my students could enter after the, the mentorship, okay? So I have some examples. It's Bruno. Uh, one of my students, like uh, three, two, uh, I don't know how can I speak it, classes before, okay? So in four months, he never opened ZBrush before, and four months, he was this, that, and re reposted by the artist. Here, another case, uh, Renan, uh, he has a different approach because he already knows ZBrush but he was stuck it right and how why you already know ZBrush why are you stuck it and then I keep uh, chatting and uh, talking with him and in one month he could achieve this this one to this one okay so those are some proofs that it isn't only about ZBrush, okay? It's about me, it's about you. I don't know if you know uh, how is your life, but in mine, I am my biggest enemy, <laughs> you know? Because when I start sculpting and I stop and I think, oh, Jesus Christ, can I do it? And I have to keep doing it until I reach the spot, okay? So think about that. And think about that when you are sculpting. Is it a ZBrush problem or is it a confidence problem, right? So, this, let's talk about a ZBrush fast learning method. It's based on some things like uh, I want to, before teaching, I need to know people. I need to know what are they thinking about, what they are, what are the, their beliefs. Because sometimes people come to me and, and say like, um, I don't have many money, so I can't do this. I don't have familiar support, so I can't do this. Oh, I don't have it, I don't have that. And okay, if you don't have self-confidence, really, you can't do that. But if you believe in yourself and keep trying, maybe you can take 10 years like me, but I'm here. <laughs> okay, so... It's the point. This one is the result of the course I spread before the mentorship. Every mentorship I start, I give this course to my students. And this is focusing on teaching the basic features, you know, to do this character. Because when they know those basic features, they can do things like this, okay? A complex piece is made of basic shapes, right? So let's go on. So what do you need to know before ZBrush? You need to get used to discomfort, insecurity, because you will deal with uh, many first times, right? You need to start with the basics. It's what I was telling you right now. You need to know that 90% of hard surface could be made with booleans. You don't need to know all the features of ZBrush. Oh, by it, it would be faster, right? You get faster, but first you need to just do it. Don't don't care about the speed in, at the beginning, you know. So you need to finish your project to build a portfolio, right? And then uh, it's my wife. She sent me this photo today. She's at Porto. She don't know I using his she, her photo. Uh, she sent me today, and what does it mean? She likes to run. She started running. 
And what's running about? What do you need to know to run? Do you know? Can you ask? Distance. What? Distance. distance. You, no, the distance, but what do you need to do to run? One step after another step. And you need to know how to breathe, take a breath. And all the time, when she finishes the uh, running, and she, oh, I completed this. This run was in Porto today, and 21 kilometers. And then she talked to me like, I completed it. And yes, but my pace was so slow. <laughs> And oh, Jesus Christ, you completed 21 kilometers. Who is caring about how long did you take? I could take like one day long and I could run this distance, you know? So time is passing and how uh, as fast as she's coming, she's getting, as less she cares about that because it's the process. You get faster naturally, okay? So, what do, what do you need to know about ZBrush to start? Like, uh, like uh, basic features. Let's talk about that. So, to scope, you need those brushes, at least those brushes I use to scope things, okay? Uh, mesh navigation. So, we are talking about sculpting. Sculpting is one of the types of workflows. You can scope in many ways, too. But you need to know some brushes to give form. You need to know mesh navigation to move the things, to mask the things. And you need to mesh control. I would say that mesh control is one of the most important part of the beginners, OK? Because you need to know the material you are dealing with. Imagine, ZBrush, you deal with a mesh. And if you go to, a, to marble, how can you do with marble? But it's sculpting too. You need to know your material, OK? And the way you can control that is by the mesh density. So you need to know DynaMesh, ZeriMesh, your divide, project. We will talk about that, OK? So I did it today, playing in the Rush on iPad. It, and man, it looked like fun, like Lillian said before. And, and th this one was like with those brushes. You don't need more than this to do that. You can have a different workflow. You can use different brushes, you know? But you don't need to know all of them. So when you, we talk about fur, hair, belt, and things like that, you will need basically no IMM and curve. So you can read like a, a, bird, a bird like that. So it looks like complex things, but you just start with some strands, put one strand beside another strand, and then you have a couple of strands, duplicate it, and DynaMesh, and after like 20 hours, it doing the same thing like a marathon, like running, <laughs> it's done, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and then hard surface. I really like Bullion. <laughs> this one is was, it was my first complex uh, project because it was my first piece of my first job. I, I didn't believe I could do that before I, do, I did that. And then when I started doing it, I was like, Jesus Christ, what I am doing with my life? <laughs> and then uh, I need to do it now. Someone's paying me now. I need to deliver that. Don't know how much I need to. So all of those hard surface things were, was made with knife, basically, and Boolean. Because I didn't know another feature to do that. <laughs> oh, it taken so long. It took me some time to do that. But it's done, right? So basically, before we enter ZBrush, now we start using ZBrush to show you the uh, things. <laughs> but I need you to know, first of all, that it's different uh, creating a character, concepting it, and modeling it, OK? Some, some examples. You see this model, oh, it has a lot of details. But this is the concept. 
So if you are starting, man, don't try creating the concept while you, you are modeling, because the concept will involve another um, concepts, uh, like uh, composition, like silhouette, like mov movement, like gesturing. And you are learning ZBrush, you are learning tools. So separate those things. And the major problem with people that uh, are starting ZBrush, they think they will open ZBrush and magically they will sculpt a character, you know? But you need to know some concepts to do it, like this, this guy here. Here, I was having fun there, and I was thinking about, oh, his eyes need to be smaller, because a small eye it will, pay, will be more dangerous creature, you know, oh, I need more silhouette, it's wrecked, I need to bring those things there. So if I had more time to do that, if I had more fun, I would try to make more silhouettes, you know? It, it isn't about the, the tool, it's about the concept, okay? So don't mix those things. Today I won't tell, tell you about concepts. I will tell you about tools, how you can realize them. So when you try to applicate, to apply that, try to take a concept and rep replicate or, or do sculpt this concept. You know, don't mix those things. So let's do it. Um, here, I will just check with my uh, ZBrush here. One thing I like to do is set my interface People ask me for uh, share my interface all the time, and I said, "No, man, no, don't take my visuals. I don't know how I can speak that in English. Visuals is it right? Something you're addicted to. Don't don't take my addictions, you know. <laughs> Build yours. <laughs> so I will start here. Like uh, I will create a sphere and make polymesh. Just take my Okay, and edit. it. Before entering ZBrush, diving into it, uh, anybody here didn't open ZBrush ever? New beginner? Anyone? All of you already used ZBrush in your life, or just in the beginning. Because you, you need to know how ZBrush works. What's the logic bef uh, behind it? You need to know, like, ZBrush is like the real life. In real life, we don't build things in one single piece. My glove, my cloth, the computer. Oh, so ZBrush sounds like that. I have a tool made of infinite subtools, OK? So I could, sh I could call it a tool, an uh, entire piece. And if I uh, keep all the components, it's like subtools. Those are the names we use here. So I pick a tool, like a sphere, and then I will make polymesh. Why, why make polymesh? Because it's 3D. Before you can sculpt it, you will have some deformations that you don't need to worry right now, OK? So click that button, transform it in a sculptable piece, right? And then, um, here, I will use the, the brushes I told you. I will use Move, um, M, 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 here, uh, Move, Control, how can I use Control here? <laughs> well, okay, perfect, thank you. <laughs> So when I want to assign a, a shortcut, I can hold Control Alt and use the the brushes. Okay. So standard, this one is standard. Dun, 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 dun. Um, here. So let me show you some of them. But the funniest part I want to show you here, it isn't sculpting itself. Because as I said, you know, sculpt need pressure, OK? You can do something with sculpting without pressure. But as deep as you come getting deeper, deeper 
you know, uh, adding more details, you will need more surface pressure. You need control, okay? So let me work with those, those brushes I could show you. So as I can use my, my scale, one is the shortcut I put here, and two, it isn't working. I let me put it again. It's standard, okay? It's standard. Control, Alt, click, two. Okay. And the clay build up. So let me show you. Here. I can move, but if you try to move here, my my sculpture is very big to the canvas, so I can use this one to deactivate dynamic. Why? A lot of people don't know why dynamic is here and why we should use that. Dynamic is a dynamic way to resize your brush all the time. Because if you are working so close, control N, to clean my space, if you are working too close and you try to move or do some detail here, and then you get this far, how can you continue your detail if you lost your size? So it comes with dynamic, because I can activate that and use it, and then I hold my size, you know? So it's dynamic. And this is what I was trying to help people, or trying to have their first, first approach. And it's my first time here, and it's my first time talking English <laughs> in public. So I'm anxious too, I'm, I'm nervous. It's challenging for me. It's like I know how you're feeling when you start in ZBrush, you know? And the life is made of challenges, you know? Imagine if you were a baby and didn't want to do the first time. So you won't burn. <laughs> you know, you wouldn't burn. So let's go. Um, here, those are the brushes. So you can sculpt, you can pick things. But the most interesting part I want to show you with the mouse is when you are, have the mouse, you need to have much more control. You need to have much more ways that you don't, will, you won't uh, mess your mesh, you know? So let's do, do something here, like the, this Viking I showed you. I can do her entirely in, in, with the mouse. I don't need pressure because she doesn't have tiny details. She doesn't have pores or things like this. So if I want to do her helmet, for example, I can come here, make poly mesh, and with the transform I showed you, I can just hold control and do this. OK? It's the base of her helmet. And OK, how can we go after this? Remember the Boolean I said to you, I showed you? We can use that too. Or I can come here, Control shift d to duplicate the subtools I told you. Rescale and Control. And come here again, the same tool. I don't need pressure. I don't need uh, a lot of fancy things, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, I can't, oh, OK, I don't like that. I can do it again. So um, come here, perfect. I can duplicate this one. Let me change this material. Uh, OK. I can use that the same way here, this way, this way. When you start. You, when you are starting, you need that. You need the pleasure of making something successful. Doesn't matter how simple is that. Uh, imagine someone is coming here and trying to scope it and don't know a lot of things and they get frustrated. And just doing a simple helmet, they get much more fun. So if you start having success, maybe you will be Use it to it, you know? You, you will be more confident to try it more. 
So let me show you new things. Um, I will use a pen, this one. Let me make some horns. And then I can rotate here, scale down. And I can use move itself. Look at this. Maybe it will take me some time, but I will do that. And then I will use another one. Um, pinch. What is it? Pinch. Here. Pinch. Perfect. Not perfect yet. Let me try again. Pinch. Oop. Pinch. Okay. So I can pinch that. And now I have a horn. And can make come back to move and I have a horn I can adjust it as much as I want and some some people ask me okay and another faster way to do it if you already use ZBrush and if you are starting close your eyes don't confu confuse your mind it's not for you now okay <laughs> But you could use band curve that you can use those anchors. To get a similar result. Right? So if you are starting, it was faster, but it's the same thing. <laughs> right? You don't need to know everything to start you just need to do it you just need to start sculpting it's why I, I love to teach for people who is at the beginning because the transition of oh no I can't do it I don't have talent I don't know how to draw it how to draw and uh, give me 10 15 minutes let me show you something <laughs> here and then people get amazed oh man I can do a helmet now I never did nothing about art in my life and then we can continue sculpting that and here if you are a new user you can just pick that command shift D, duplicate hold control use size to inflate and there are some ways to do like a ring in the horn on the horn so I use some folder here uh, a pound new folder what is ah, here a horn okay and another horn here is one method to use boolean boolean has three functions or you can use with two or more subtools you can add volume you can subtract volume or or you can intersect what i want to do and you want you before you doing it you need to know what you want to do so uh, let me explain you if i want to do a ring there okay a ring what i need to do i need more volume and then i need to cut then we have a ring now you know what we are doing now let me show you how we do that in zbrush okay with boolean for example here i have my two my basic one uh, solo, where is my solo button here? On, um, control. Uh, here, solo, just to show you. Okay, and then I have another one here, the biggest one. So let me take just the biggest one, and I will create here um, a cube. Uh, let me put it in the folder. Here, I deactivate the design. I is for visibility, OK? So I can do this way. I can use here, Control shift td and use here. Here are the Boolean effects. The first one, to, to fill the circles, is to add. I don't want to add. I want to subtract. So the second one. And live Boolean to activate Boolean. And now I have my ring. Right? Um, let, uh. OK. You are starting to do the tails. If you are starting, you can do this way. If you, 
you are starting, now you close your eyes again, because I will show other methods, right? It's not for you at the moment. <laughs> so I can use some, some ways to do it. This case, it won't work to try to shrink that with the transform, because shrink should you use transform. Transform basically do this. Let me show you why it don't work. Here. If I try to do this the same way, won't work. Why? Because it's just shrinking. It isn't right. Oh, Ctrl Z. See? The mesh going down. It won't work. We need to really cut it, not flatten. So I can use the knife brush, right? I can use the knife brush again, holding space and B radius, choose my size and do this. Okay? So I have many ways to do the same things in brush. I don't know, you don't need to do every ways. I, I'm still learning, you know. I was I was there with other artists and watching them modeling. And they use the same tools in different ways. And I was, oh, really? <laughs> really? And Lillian, which was talking for me here, she was sculpting an amazing elf there. And I, wow, what a piece. And then she came here with the same iPad. And she asked, how can I subtract that? And I was, what the hell? How can you sculpt that <laughs> without subtracting? You know, you just did it now and don't know even how to subtract. And it opens our mind because when you get off pressure and get rid of subtracting and try to do the basics, it makes more simple to read the goals. So it's my purpose with ZBrush, with teaching, it show people that you can do much with basic things. Let me tell you a story before I continue that. Long time ago, like six years ago, I had an opportunity to learn with Alex Oliver. And he was teaching in a workshop of faces, OK? And I was, oh, Christ, OK, let me get into it. And then, when I arrived there and see other people with their tools, and then, and I, oh, Jesus Christ, where are my tools? I forgot it. And I had a, a full kit of tools to sculpt it with the clay. And now I, I didn't have anything. And I just cried, I won't waste my money, you know? I will find a way to sculpt and learn with him. I don't need those tools. And then I found, found a stick in the floor. And I start modeling with the stick. I, OK, you won't want me, you know? And with the mouse, if you have a mouse, if you have just a stick, start modeling. Because when you use that to stop you, it's like excuses. So you are feeding the same enemy I have, myself. <laughs> so don't hear yourself sometimes. Just do it. Just do it what, with what you have. So let me show you more things. Uh, it's the helmet. If I want to add more details, I can just pick here, cut here, duplicate, add a bunch of thing, uh, things. And if I want to do, for example, an axe, a lot of people ask me, how, how can I do an axe? Um, I can do these axe for, um, let me. I can take a cylinder. I can make it with the cylinder. Make polymesh. And there are, are you seeing that? If you never open ZBrush, those are polygons. I can get rid of them. And come here and edge loop and delete loops. I don't want them now, OK? But I want a middle loop. How can I do that? I can just mirror. If I mirror, one part will be equal with the other part. And at the middle, I will have a loop that I can edit. So let me mirror that. If you want to mirror, when I teach people and I ask, what you want to do? And people tell me this thing, like mirror. What you are doing when you mirror? You are doing, you are modifying, you are 
polygons, your geometry. So you can come to geometry about polygons. You can come here to modify topology and mirror and weld. You don't need to know all the paths. You just need to understand the organization of the path. So it's another trick. When people come to me and, oh gosh, I have to memorize all those shortcuts, all those um, tools, all those things, and then I, no, stop. You don't need to memorize that. You just need to understand those. So what you want to do? Why? What is the, the description of you are doing? You are using your geometry, you are modifying your topology, so you have a menu for that, okay? So here, mirror and weld, I will just change it, and now I have this one. And then I can come here, just use the mask, as I said. Um, many types of mask, a square, a circle. Let me take this one. Invert it and pay. And now I can come to subtool, append, a cylinder, cylinder, come here, bam. And now I have an axe, you know? Here. And then I can use another cylinder. You don't need fancy things <laughs> to do the axe, you just need cylinders. <laughs> so here, come here and we can use the bend curve again. Oops, I can add some anchors. Okay, I can change my size. I won't dive into the, the bend curve right now, but can do this. Right. And then people ask me, how can I do a bandage? And then I make a... a, a a real a ZBrush hack. There was one of the most successful <laughs> ZBrush hacks that far away is teaching how to do a bandage in one minute because it's simple. Look at it. Imagine that. When I was trying to do the, the face, I told you, people were trying to sculpt hair, hair, uh, I don't know, bra braids, you know? And they are having, struggling a lot. And I was struggling a lot too. Have you ever tried to sculpt a braid, a braid uh, of hair? It's so hard. And then I was listening to music and I, I stopped it and I let me try to look by another point of view. And I, okay, okay, now I know. If you give to a kid a bunch of clay and ask her to ask it, him or her to make a braid, what he, he would do? You would pick it, roll, pick another one, roll, pick another one, roll, and make a bread. And I was in a class of 20 sculptors, artists, that was struggling to do a bread. And a kid with three years old could do it better. <laughs> so don't conf don't be confused by the tools. The tools are here to serve you, not to make you struggle, you know? You need the basics. So let me show you that. If I want to add some braids, some, some bandages here, there are some ways to do that. You can do one by one, like with the... Opa, let me... Uh, Ctrl Z. Inflate, that way that I can do one by one. Back up here. Cut this one. Why are you? This minute here. Sorry. I just duplicate that 
inflated it and cutting. Ah, I can resize that a little bit and I can cut again. You can do it all the way. I just need one tool, knife. And people come struggling with that. Ah, I can't, I can't do that. How? You can just press three buttons, you know, and do it for like 40 minutes or 20 minutes. Okay, it's slow, but who cares? You can do it. Another way to do that, let me show you. You can use the control shift B radius method. You can just click and then you have one bread. Nice. You can use, for example, uh, another one. If you are starting, close your eyes again. <laughs> because I can use that. I can just duplicate. I can inflate. I can cut my polygons here, my polygroups. Polygroups, guys, is just a way to organize your polygons, OK? To use another tools. So cut as you want. Pay, pay, pay. Let me organize that. Inflate a little bit. And then I can use Dynamesh with groups and Dynamesh it. And perfect. I already have my my bandage and to organize that, make the overlaps, I can use move topology or I can use just move and use the topology. What's the move topology does? Move topology makes moves with separated topologies. How? I have these two made of a lot of sub tools and if I want to make a move, just that the tip in this metal part, I would use move topology because the move would move everything. So how can I do that? Do you remember what protect the mesh? A mask. You can mask what you don't want to move. So I don't need to show a new brush to my student. I just need to explain what's the logic behind that. And then I can come to brush, a configuration, and auto mask. So you can ask what this menu does. Uh, it auto mask, okay, and then I can use this one topological, right? And then I can use this to move my bandages. So you have this way to do it, right? Man, I. I took like six years modeling with the mouse. And when I started in Facebook and a lot of people, oh, I don't have money to sculpt. Do you think, guys, that I can use ZBrush with the mouse, start learning, start doing? And I said, yes, you can. And a bunch of people, no, you need a tablet. You need pressure. You need to do these, 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 these. And then, no, guys, you're just frustrating another, maybe another new artist, you know? If I believe it that I won't be here, <laughs> I wouldn't be here because I was with the mouse. I didn't have money to buy a, a tablet, you know? I didn't have money to buy fancy things to model. So I didn't have money to buy a course. I didn't have money to do that. So I was watching a bunch of ZBrush tutorials, Michael Pavlovic, those guys, and I was, whoa, he's teaching a new tool. Let, let me try this tool in ZBrush. So it's the point that I, that I want to bring to you. To learn ZBrush, you need to start with the basics. To run, you need the basics. To do anything, you need the basics. Do you think my wife would start running if she didn't start running with the normal sneakers? Man, if you are starting, you don't want to waste money in an investment that you don't know if you will continue on that. So before investing on things like a tablet, like a computer, fancy things, just start. 
give it a chance, a chance if you like it. And when you like it, buy things slowly. Buy a course, buy a tablet, buy a, a, a better mouse. You need this sometimes. So go slowly, but do it, right? So I took like 10 years to reach there. And it's an honor for me, like having my student portfolios like one month doing those things that I took 10 years to do. It's amazing because, man, Henan, for example, he, he came to me and I don't know if I'm capable to do that. And then, man, you are red nose airbrush. What you are incapable of? Because he was struggling with that, with the basics. And every class, I would teach him a new tool, and he already know, and I, you already know the basics. Start with that. Stop mixing all the things together. You already know. So what do you need to know? What do you need to start doing? If you are new to ZBrush, and I, ah, OK. And if you are new to the ZBrush, and if you are go to the iPad, you'll come to the, the program, open that, pick your tool, and start having fun. Because when you get used to a 3D ambient, like turning things around, zooming in, zooming out, and do, doing those things and having fun, you will have pleasure. You need pleasure and try to do simple things because you need to achieve things. Don't wait to, uh, like my wife, don't wait to reach 21 kilometers to have fun, to be happy. She started with five and she was happy. So my students came happy doing those things like this helmet and one month later, he was doing this dragon that I showed you. So, she started with a model like this one, learning the basics. And one month later, he was doing that. Not doing that one month later. One month later, it was done. In this period, he made uh, four scopes and each one he learned new tools don't try to learn everything at once at once a time it will melt your brain man. <laughs> so conclude your workflow conclude your basic projects and any new project try to learn a new thing it's why i chose those pieces because when i started Karn, this one, I learned how to do hard surface in a way. When I was doing this one, I learned how to do hard surface again another way. And then I, I missed that thing and I need to redo this like two, three, four times. And each new time I was learning more things. This bird. Uh, to reach this result, the simple result I told you, I tried like four different ways and every new way I didn't like the result. And then at the end, okay, I will try the most slow way possible doing the tail where the tail. And it was good. Take me time. Things like that take time. So give yourself some time. And if your head doesn't let you have fun, do like me. Turn on some music. Have fun. So this is brush for iPad that I'm talking to Rodolfo, Carol, and all the guys. And the major difference for me, it's because you feel like having fun. You're just scratching things, you know. And that is it. I hope that's a uh, way to think your new things, new hobbies to start on that. And if you are red scoped, uh, maybe I ask you to think about that, to close your eyes, think another way, another point of view to get your job better. What you are learning in your 
actual project, what you are trying to reach? Are you giving you, yourself time that, that this piece need, that this statue need? You need time, you need to have fun, you need to know yourself. What do you like to do when you are stressed? Do you know yourself? If you don't know yourself, if you don't know your mental barriers, if you don't know what makes you have fun, if you don't know what makes you happy, you won't learn that because it's hard, but it's hard in a fun way, bro. So meet yourself because when I am struggling, when I am in a bad humor, I just stop, take a coffee, I go to the streets with my wife, then I return. Okay, now I'm ready to scope and learn more. So, guys, thanks for your time and have fun with the basics. <laughs> Thank you a lot. Thank you so much, Kayo. Did you all enjoy it? Go and talk to him. Talk to him. He's amazing. He'll teach you some tips and tricks. <laughs> And he's always smiling, that's what I love about him. No matter what, you talk to him, he's always, that, that's a smile. Brighten, brightens up my day. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thanks for the support. Keep doing, always, keep doing amazing stuff, please. <laughs>